Hey YouTube, it's Tar the Antenna Man, and I'm here at CES 2020 in Las Vegas, Nevada. I want to give a huge thanks to Marshall, Ian, and all of the people at One Media who sent me out to the show to give you guys a good in-depth view on ATSC 3.0 and some of the gadgets that are shown here. CES is a consumer electronics show that takes place every year in Las Vegas. This year drew close to 170,000 people from about 160 countries, according to the CES website. Thanks to Tom John Little for filming as a second shooter during my hunt for ATSC 3.0 tech. I first stopped at the ATSC 3.0 Next Gen TV booth. Inside were displays showing various ATSC 3.0 products. The first thing I noticed was a sign that said 20 in 2020, referring to 20 TV sets that will be ATSC 3.0 compatible in 2020. You'll see some examples of these sets a bit later in this video. Here are a list of TV markets that are scheduled to launch ATSC 3.0 sometime in 2020. Markets in bold are the top 40 in the United States. I'm not going to read through the whole list, but take a quick look and see if your market is included in the launch. Understand that the launch does not necessarily mean you have to buy new equipment right away. This map shows the expected coverage area of ATSC 3.0 stations by the end of 2020. The plan is to reach 70% of the U.S. population. FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr even made an appearance at the Next Gen TV booth. Time to get into the tech. Here's a set-top box created by One Media, the same company that sent me to CES. It integrates both ATSC 3.0 and on-demand content. Here's a quick demonstration. What we're showing off here is uh, the first time we've converged an OTT app with over-the-air. This application is actually getting an over-the-air signal, and that's what you see on these three cards. It's getting three ATSC 3.0 signals. The first one is a simulcast of our Las Vegas NBC station. You pull it up, and now you're watching over the air, Next Gen TV. This signal is actually coming from our station and being transmitted from Black Mountain, which is our transmission site. So it's real. It's not a toe in the parking lot. It's not an exciter, you know, on the floor. This is a real transmission. The other takeaway from all of this is this is not an ATSC 3 TV. And this is not an ATSC 3.0 Apple TV, yet we're watching ATSC 3.0. Pearl, an ATSC 3.11 Phoenix made up of these large broadcasters, showed off some interactive features on their demo. You can see the local station's live broadcast with additional content, such as latest headlines, weather, and investigative reports. These are additional partners involved with the ATSC 3.0 launch in Phoenix. Again, some very large companies. The company Guyan demonstrated a cross-platform data link on the broadcasting side for TV stations looking to convert to ATSC 3.0. Some of the interactive features includes traffic and smart city applications. So as you can see here, there is parking meter, there is trash collection, and you'll find a lot of all the current street markings. Guyon's technology allows broadcasters to convert to ATSC 3.0 alongside their existing 1.0 infrastructure. This is the broadcaster tower offering 1.0 transmission. With Guyon's new patent pending innovation, we can make this transmission also offer ATSC 3.0 next-gen TV services. So the Guyon magic is ability to ingest next-gen TV 3.0 services into one-daughter transmission. Not quite ATSC 3.0 related, but RCA showed off some indoor and outdoor antenna models at CES. I applaud RCA for some of these models behind me for including VHF elements. As you probably, many of you probably know on my channel, there are many antennas that do not have the proper VHF elements to pick up RF channels 2 through 13. They're on these antennas. They also showed off a portable signal meter to calibrate outdoor antennas. Personally, I would prefer a portable TV set, but this is a start for the consumers setting up outdoor antennas. Here's a Sony 4K TV set that features ATSC 3.0 compatibility. Other OLED and LCD models are expected to be available sometime this year. 
LG had several 8K OLED TV models on display with the Next Gen TV logo. I asked the representative when they would be available. LG is expecting to have our ATSC 3.0 Next Gen TV models out sometime either the first or the second quarter of 2020. Samsung's 8K QLED line will also be ATSC 3.0 compatible. I was told by a representative that the expected release of these TV sets is the second quarter of 2020. SK Telecom showed off a 5G ATSC 3.0 hybrid implemented in a car that provides real-time map updates and some live TV for the backseat passengers. WePro displayed a TV and cell phone dongle that picked up ATSC 3.0 broadcasts, along with software that implemented 5G services. I was told two situations where 5G may come in handy alongside ATSC 3.0. Suppose you were receiving uh, content over ATSC 3 over the, uh, you know, the broadcast, but then you were uh, moving out of the range of ATSC. And then you could switch over to 5G as a backup. The other use case is, uh, let's say the cellular network is congested, the 5G network is congested. This could happen if a number of users are watching the same channel, say there's a live telecast, and there are a number of unicast streams, right? Then the 5G network would get congested. Then you could switch over from 5G to ATSC 3. Geniatech displayed both an ATSC 3.0 laptop dongle an Android set-top box that connects to any TV set. The same company makes this ATSC 1.0 cell phone dongle that I reviewed on my YouTube channel last year. It allows any Android smartphone with a USB-C port to pick up ATSC 1.0 broadcasts. I was told that there may be plans to make an ATSC 3.0 version in the future. I was also invited to two private displays not available to the public. Triveni Digital gave me a quick demo on how their hardware would incorporate emergency alerts with ATSC 3.0. Instead of scrolling text on the screen that can be missed, the whole message pops up with live radar and other critical information. Many times cell phone reception goes down during hurricanes and tornadoes, so ATSC 3.0 has the potential to save lives. At the other display, Sonkia Labs showed me their home gateway that could send ATSC 3.0 signals to multiple TV sets, a dongle for smartphones and tablets, and two different chipsets, one of which could be built into a smartphone. There are two flavors of the chip. One is which is meant for televisions, gateway, set-top box, which is demand only chip. Mm -hmm. The other one that we have done is basically a uh, power-optimized, form factor-optimized chipset, which is for mobile. I was also told about the concept of TV broadcasters using low-powered antennas to boost reception in certain areas. Some of you may like the following benefit of this model, specifically those of you that say, I don't want this ugly antenna on my roof. The benefit of you know, ATHC3 is that you, know, you can use, you don't necessarily need a big antenna, you know, it used, like it used to be like ATHC1. So with you know, like a small antenna like this one, you know, about this size, you can and even you can have very good reception even in the you know, inside of you know, the, uh, your home. So there may have been a few things from ATSC 3.0 that I missed, but this show is just absolutely enormous. I mean, I can't even put into words like how big this show is. And again, I appreciate One Media for sending me out here. Hopefully this video gave you some good insight on the future of ATSC 3.0 and that it is very bright. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related information and have an awesome day.